Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a 8x10 canvas panel collage abstract art that I made during the Art Joy of Sharing a live stream show this morning. We live stream every week on Thursdays over at the Art Joy of Sharing channel which you can find the link below and you can watch this in real time um, instead of speed mode. But I know some people like to watch in speed mode and they don't have the patience to watch for an hour and a half. And so this is what this video is for here on my channel. So the first thing I did was sort out some kind of neutral uh, collage paper. This is everything from like that one, that dark one in the corner is magazine, um, magazine paper that I've sanded with a stencil. The one on the other side is a gel print cleanup like if there's a some crusty bits on the plate and you just put down a coat of white to clean it all up that's what you get um, I've got some deli paper that has some alcohol ink staining on it I've got roll-off paper from when I gel print uh, under paper just all kinds of interesting painty bits that I collect and keep and make all the time because I'm a collage artist and I'm a mixed media artist. That's what I like is is paper, colorful, patterny, interesting paper. So I've sorted them out and I want to make sort of almost like a uh, light to dark. So I'm starting up in the left hand corner with a very light paper and then trying to uh, fade the paper across. So I've picked different papers and I'm layering them on. Um, I'm tearing them down using a ruler and I did learn from Mary Beth Schott, Stencil Girl, that if you turn the roll, ruler over with the cork backing, it's a metal ruler, if you have the cork back, backing up then and the metal side down, it makes a much uh, sharper edge when you tear, but you still get a torn paper and not a cut paper. So this is torn paper collage it is not it's not paper piecing it is torn paper collage because it's all little bits of torn paper sometimes I'm tearing them by hand if you tear, tear the paper if you're right-handed and you hold it in your left and you tear it towards you you get a, um, a core of the paper effect on the edge which is usually a white edge if you t if you hold it in your left hand and tear it away from you you don't get that fluffy white edge. So I generally try to tear it away from myself unless I want that raggedy white edge. Um, sometimes I want that effect. So of course, if you are left-handed, you need to, to uh, do what I just said in the opposite. <laughs> so um, that's just a little tip. Giving you some tips today, I guess. Also, uh, when you're applying your paper, down, I like to have a piece of scratch paper next to me that I can use so that I can make sure I get the medium all the way to the edge of the paper so there's not any edges curling. I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium, which is my preference for this type of artwork. And also sometimes if the paper is a little bit heavier, like a lot of my prints are made on printer paper that's probably the heaviest that I really use. I don't like to use cardstock or anything like that. Uh, some, occasionally I do if I have to because it's so cool I have to do it. Um, but otherwise the heaviest paper I use would be a text weight paper like a printer paper and I'll mist that on the back to kind of loosen up the fibers when I apply it. If it's deli paper, tissue paper, anything like that, which most of this was deli paper and then there's that one little extra bit up at the top that's magazine paper, magazine ad paper. Those thin papers don't really need to be spritzed. I just apply some medium to the canvas and then apply it to the back of the paper and I stick it down. I like to smooth it out with that thing in my hand which is a, a scraper type of a situation and uh, also my finger. Sometimes I just have like a little bit of medium on my finger and I push out the wrinkles. Deli paper does like to wrinkle when you collage so um, I usually have to press out the wrinkles a little bit. It wrinkles when you're gel printing it and then the wrinkles stay uh, wrinkly and so I try to get those out. 
So here's my neutral background with a lot of different papers from different times and different methods and uh, who knows where they all came from. And I'm starting to think about what I'm going to do over this background. The background is beautiful and I, I want to save it, but yet I do need something else. So I decided to get out these Trish McKinney stencils. She's the designer. These are manufactured by Stencil Girl Products. But she designs them. They're uh, organic mask type stencils. And I I was thinking this morning when I, I didn't know what I was going to make at all. Like, like literally no idea. But I wanted to play with olive green and an orangey red um, as opposing colors. That was the only idea I had was have an olive green, maybe a couple different tints and tones of olive green with this opposing red orange type rusty color. That was my big plan. Big plan. <laughs> I guess I really am seasonally driven. Even though I live in a place that doesn't really have a lot of seasons, I still seem to always want to do fall colors in the fall, winter colors in the winter, and uh, you know the brighter colors in the spring and summer. It's just, I'm just wired that way. So this turns out to be quite a lot of fall colors. I'm using some ink, some acrylic ink, which uh, this is Matisse brand, and then that one is the one with the sepia color that I'm putting on right now is a Liquitex. Acrylic ink is just thin acrylic paint. Um, you know, it still has all the properties of acrylic paint, so it's the same stuff, but it's really fun. You can, you know, drip it, draw with it, um, do interesting stuff with it, so I'm kind of really in love with it. I have a lot of different brands. I've got uh, Sennelier brand. I've got Abstract brand, um, Liquitex, and then these Matisse. And as you can see, I decided to do some mark making with the sepia-toned uh, Liquitex. Um, into, I'm into these swirly squiggly lines right now. I'm just uh, really interested in them for some reason. And so I put those over after I've stenciled in the background with the Trish McKinney, which is kind of the same idea, the swirly uh, squiggly lines that kind of look like maybe vines or something. I don't know. But I decide it's too dark. And so I put a piece of scratch paper over it and then I blend it out a little bit and it's becoming a pretty interesting piece at this point. Um, I decided to do some more collage. I was thinking about that light area as kind of a portal and I decided to emphasize that by tearing a arched piece out of kind of rusty colors uh, print and then I'm putting some ground in with some olive green and some quinacridone gold and those different types of colors. And I decide that there must be a moon in the sky. Maybe this is in a jungle and you just come up upon this portal that's shiny and bright and it's, it's inviting and you want to go in. And it's going to take you away somewhere to something really nice and away from your current life, <laughs> your current situation that you're not satisfied with. That was kind of uh, where I was going here. I don't know how intentional all of it was, but this, but when you just start, you just start a piece and you say, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to use olive green. I'm going to use uh, rusty brown, red, orangey color. And that's all I know. Then you allow your subconscious mind to just kind of take you there. Of course, this is on a live stream, so there is a little bit of distraction, but I mostly just on the live stream, I mean, I talk and I answer questions, but mostly I just put my head down and work. <laughs> I think most of the talking comes from Peg. I think that um, she has a lot of explanations for things and she, she talks more than I do. And I mostly just, uh, like I do in real life, put my head down and work. That's that's my personality. I'm not a big talker. So um, this piece came out. This is uh, what happened today. So now I'm just gluing down the rest of the stuff that I pulled out uh, to put on here. And there's, there's so much pattern and layers. And I've hardly even, I mean, I've worked on it a little bit, but I've hardly even 
worked that hard to create all those patterns and layers. And at the end of the video, you'll see the close-ups and you'll see just how much interesting shapes there are in this piece. Um, I was very happy with that. I think it got a little bit overcrowded and maybe my concept didn't come out at quite as much as I wanted, but um, that's what happens when I work on a small thing. The eight by 10 is not very big. So I end up getting a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on because I just want to keep working on the layers and I keep want to keep working on the patterns and shapes and all the interesting paper and, and, uh, it just gets crowded sometimes, but I just keep putting it on. I like it. I'm having fun. And so I've got these pieces that kind of look like uh, maybe some rocks in our jungle. And then I've got this arched doorway with the portal and it's lighter behind it. I'm trying to keep the, the light source as if it's shining out of this portal and then shining across the ground. And then I have one, I needed a vertical piece, so I have one kind of like almost a tree that's coming up in front of it. And I build that up quite a bit with a lot of different colors and interesting. Uh, the paper that I use there, the first piece, when I'm gel printing and I'm using my larger plate, which is a 12 by 12, and I have eight and a half by 11 paper, I really like to do that because I get the entire eight and a half by 11 piece covered with paint and I don't have edges. When I work with my eight by 10 gel plate, I get, I get uh, white edges around the paper because it's not as big as the paper. And, but when I do work with the 12 by 12 and then I put an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, I always have paint around the edges outside of the paper. And so what I'll do is I'll put a, a larger piece of deli paper over it and press down and then I end up getting these these skinny edge pieces of paper on that's you know the the leftover paint on the edges I, I, I don't know if I'm describing that well enough for you to understand what I'm saying but um, that paper sometimes those edge pieces are so interesting because usually it's a multiple layers of paint that you're playing with and you're you know it's it's the crusty bits it's the edgy crusty bits that I like so much and those that strip of paper that I glued down was one of those. So it has all kinds of different colors in it. And from a distance here on the video, it's maybe not as easy to see, but when you look in the uh, close-ups at the end, it will be um, interesting to look at, I promise. It's interesting to look at. So then the next thing I'm doing is adding a little bit more darkness to this arched piece by using some of that uh, sepia toned uh, acrylic ink and a water brush and just darkening and darkening up places uh, letting it letting it be diluted by the the water brush of course I'm also brightening up a few pages not pages places with some finger painting uh, I like to finger paint on my pieces. I like to apply paint with my fingers. I've got some of this uh, olive green paint that I'm adding. Um, I'm also adding some more of this acrylic ink. This one is like a rusty color. Uh, the, the Matisse inks that I pulled out were designed, the colors were designed by Pam Carricker. And they're very fall, very, very fall. There's a rust, an ochre, an olive. Um, so yeah, definitely fall colors. And then the sepia is the Liquitex is one of the basic colors that, that their ink comes in in the basic set. I think it's like red, red, white, black, red, blue, yellow, and sepia is what you get in the basic set. You know, you can buy them in a set and it's le less expensive. And that's one of those. I do like to draw with the acrylic ink. I like to make mark make marks with it. It's fun. And then I will blot with that piece of uh, deli paper, scratch paper, which also makes starts making layers on that deli paper, which are interesting, <laughs> which I'll use that as some other, some other time because I don't want them to be that dark. I just want them to be dark-ish. And so I'll blot 
um, blot some of the pooled up ink. And then I'm doing that with the uh, ochre toned one as well. And the rust color. It's just, it's just fun to, they, they're fun to mark make with. They, fluidy, they're fluidity, but they have that dropper thing that you can write with. However, it makes a fat line, which we were having this discussion, this very intense discussion this morning before the live stream, Peg and I, about how I wished that the Pintel Pocket Brush Pin, which I'm currently obsessed with, came in other colors besides black. And then we were discussing how we could take the, an old cartridge, rinse it out, rinse the brush out, put some other India ink in it in a different color, make and make a new brush pin with a better color, and why doesn't Pentel make it in a different color? I don't know. I'd like to have paints gray. I would like to have sepia in addition to my black. So if you're out there, Pentel, make it. <laughs> make it. We'll buy it. We promise. <laughs> so I've got the Trish McKinney stencils back out again. These are such cool stencils. And, and there's, there's even like a huge one that's like 24 inches long that you can get um, with these viney organic shapes. They're just neat. So I, I put a little bit more of those on there. Still doing a little bit of finger painting. Um, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm needing to evaluate uh, how do I feel about it? Is it too boring? Is it boring? And I decided, yes, it was. I decided it needed something else. And so I end up getting out my Woody, Stabilo Woody pencils, which are like the Stabilo All pencil that I love, the black one that's so water reactive and you can really get interesting shadows. These are like that, but they're all different colors and they're fat, they're big and uh, feel nice in your hand. And I decided what it needed was turquoise. Because, yeah, turquoise just took this boring thing from blah to, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> when I put the turquoise on there, I felt it was, um, it was magically changing. And I was happy about that. So then I ended up adding uh, some more, some more Stabilo Woodies. I added some orange. I added a peach tone. Um... I keep messing with it. Stabilo, of course, is movable with water, so I'm using the water brush to blend it. Having a lot of fun. Uh, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to leave me a comment or a thumbs up or both. Uh, <laughs> question if you want to. There's the orange. Um, you know, those things help my channel. Also, Sharing it on Pinterest, pinning it to Pinterest or something like that helps. Or sharing it with a friend that you think might be interested in this painting. All those things really help my channel and help it grow. And I would really, really like to get to the next level by the end of the year, which in subscriptions, it would be really great. So I'm, I'm close. I'm a hundred and something away from the next big number. And it would be super great to get that by the end of the year. So if you'll help me out by sharing and and um, commenting and liking and subscribing and all those things, that would be super. So I keep going back in and adding more of that dark tone uh, with my squiggle marks over and over and then blotting them back and then putting it back in. That's kind of how you work mixed media. You put something on, you take it back, you put it in, you da da da, back and forth. And um, there's the peach color, which I added in a little bit of that. These woodies are fun, and I've been using them a lot lately. Just another one of those super fun mark-making things. If you're interested in the woodies or anything else that I've used, you can go to my Amazon store. That also helps me out. And um, also, I'll probably, probably put links to the specific things in the description box below if... I'm going to go eat some lunch first, <laughs> and then if I remember, I'll come back and put the links in below. But it, if not, I know that my favorite things are on my Pinterest store, and there's a link below the video. So this piece is just about done. I did add some white spatters after the 
video is over, so just you'll see those in the close-ups. But here they are. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.